So a new study by Wits and Cape Town Universities has revealed that recent HIV infections are associated with an acute genital ulceration compared to HIV negative individuals. The study further revealed that HIV negative patients were at high risk of acquiring HIV infection due to symptoms of untreated STIs. For more on this, we're joined by Tendesai Kufa, who is the NICD epidemiologist lead researcher. Thank you very much ma'am for availing yourself this afternoon so maybe let's start perhaps with how the research was conducted um, thank you so much for inviting me to come speak about this study so this study was conducted in 2019 uh, as part of the routine surveillance that we at NICD in collaboration with other partners uh, VIDS and UCT and um, conduct every year so as you may know or may not know um, STIs are managed syndromically in South Africa. So if um, our listeners have ever been to a clinic with symptoms of STIs, we'll ask, do you have a discharge or do you have a, a sore? And then we will treat for all the possible causes of um, all the possible causes that, you know, causes those symptoms without really testing for the specific organisms that cause the, the, those symptoms. And that's what we call syndromic management. And so to make sure that our syndromic management keeps up with the causes, the different causes of the STIs sim symptoms, we conduct uh, surveillance every year. So we go into uh, specified STI clinics and we speak to patients and we collect uh, genital specimens to test in the lab to see what organisms people are coming with so that we always current with our treatment um, uh, combinations and regimens that we give out in the clinics to make sure that they are covering all the possible causes of the STI symptoms that people may present with. Mm -hmm. So this is the context with which, in which this study was undertaken. The only difference is that in 2019, we collected the additional blood specimens in order to test for what we call HIV biomarkers. So we wanted to look at um, who among our STI patients is HIV positive, among those that are HIV positive, who has uh, a recent infection, um, which is defined as an HIV infection that occurred in the last 6 to 12 months, and who is, has a high viral load and who's taking ARVs. Because we know that if you are HIV positive and you are not taking your treatment and you have an STI, you have a high risk of transmitting HIV to someone who doesn't have HIV. And vice versa, if you're HIV negative and you have an STI, but your partner is HIV positive and is not virally suppressed, in other words, their viral load is detectable and they have high viral load, you can acquire HIV from them. So this is the reason why STIs are very important because they facilitate the transmission of HIV from someone with HIV to someone who doesn't have and vice versa, the acquisition of HIV from someone who has HIV by somebody who does not have HIV. Mm. Uh, please help us here. What is acute genital ulceration? So acute genital ulceration is just um, um, a sore on the genitals. So we know that some STIs present with, with a sores, and, uh, like a wound or like your syphilis, your herpes. So when that uh, happens over a short period of time, we call that acute genital ulceration. So when we were seeing our STI patients, the ones that we enrolled in the study, some had uh, genital discharge, either a vaginal discharge or a urethral discharge, and some of them had um, genital ulcers. And so we found that those ones that had genital ulcers were more likely to have recent infection compared to people that did not have genital ulcers. What is the value of um, STI services in the country and what did uh, your research identify when it comes to how we are faring? Um, so STI services are very important because STIs are very common. Um, the World Health Organization estimates that every year globally we have about 350 million new cases of STIs occurring in the world somewhere in the world. Um, and South Africa also has a high burden. Uh, we have about 2 million cases of gonorrhea every year, um, and we have about 90,000 cases of syphilis. This is from 
data that we um, generated from modeling studies because we don't do a very good job of tracking the number of cases that we see. And also the majority of STIs go unnoticed and sometimes untreated because you can have them be being asymptomatic. So in other words, some people with STIs will not have any symptoms. Uh, and they'll just present later on in life with complications such as infertility, um, urethral strictures, um, you know, mother-to-child transmission of these infections. Say, for example, syphilis is transmitted from an infected mother to, um, to the unborn child. So sometimes yeah. and the mother doesn't even remember or knows if she, she's had syphilis in the past. So some STIs can, can have no symptoms. And so we don't have a good handle on how many STIs we have. We can count the ones that come to our health facilities in the public sector, but we miss out on STIs that are treated privately, one, and the ones that are treated by uh, traditional health uh, practitioners and also the ones that don't present with symptoms so people don't go uh, uh, to be treated. Hmm. Uh, you also note that the new findings strengthen existing research that has linked high inflammation levels of genitalia with HIV acquisition. Please expand on that. Um, so what we found in our research is that um, about 20% of, uh, of our STI patients that we enrolled in the study at the two clinics, in one in Gauteng and one in the Western Cape, were HIV positive. And that's higher than what we see in the general population, and that's expected. So um, because we are looking at a population that, uh, you know, because they have, are presenting with symptoms um, that are consistent with STIs, are likely to have had unprotected sex, and these STIs and HIV share a common um, method of transmission. So we expect that, you know, compared to the general population, people coming into our STI clinics are more likely to to be HIV positive compared to those um, that, are, that, are, that, are, that, that are in the general population. Mm -hmm. But among those that were HIV positive, we found that one in, um, about a sixth, which is one in, in six, were new infections or recent infections, which is high. And then another finding we found is that of those that were not recent infections, in other words, your long-term infections, um, the majority of people with long-term infections were not on ART, despite a policy um, uh, directive that has been a guideline, a policy guideline or that has been in place since 2016, that all HIV-positive people, regardless of their CD4 count or viral load or clinical situation, need to be on ARVs. And then those that were on ARVs, um, we expect that we have a target of 90% in 2019, now 95% since 2020, that 95% of all people taking ARVs should have viral loads that are undetectable or less than 50. Mm -hmm. In this case, we used a threshold of 200, um, and we found that only about 76% of those were on ART had viral loads less than 200. The majority of them had viral loads that were higher than that, which shows that we're not doing well with uh, viral suppression among um, our HIV-positive STI patients. So we think that um, the STI service platform or the clinic, when people come with an STI, we should do more than just treat the STI. We should check where they are at with their HIV. Are they HIV-positive? If they are positive, are they on ART? If they are on ART, are they virally suppressed so that we can maximize the prevention benefit of HIV um, in, in a group that, is, that has high risk um, uh, behaviors for HIV transmission. Hmm. That's all we have time for this afternoon. Thank you very much for helping us understand. Tenda Sai Kufa is an epidemiologist with the NICD and she's the lead researcher there.